Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the adjustment brush to make local changes to your images. Now what I suggest is that you make all of your global changes first, then make your local changes. Not only do your global changes affect what you may decide to do locally, but you can often make local changes using HSL or the tone curve. So I use the adjustment brush in particular as my tool of last resort. It's powerful, but it takes a fair amount of work to paint where I want to affect. Okay, so in this image, let's go ahead and boost the overall exposure a little bit. And the image feels a little pink to me, so I'm going to slide the tint slider a little bit towards green. Let's consider the global changes done on this image. What I want to do next is come in and brighten the whites of their eyes, maybe brighten and desaturate his teeth a little bit, and add some saturation to her lips. There's no way I can make those changes using the tone curve or HSL, certainly not with a graduated filter, so I'm down to the adjustment brush. I'm going to zoom in on her lips, and we'll start by saturating her lips. I'm going to click on the adjustment brush. The settings here are sticky, so these are the settings I used last time I used the adjustment brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is reset all of these sliders by double clicking on the words. By the way, if you're using Lightroom 2 and you don't have sliders here, you have buttons instead, you'll see a switch over here to the right. Click on that to change this to slider view and never change it back. That button view went away in Lightroom 3 because it's just not as powerful. What we're going to do is increase saturation. Now as I slide the slider, you'll see that nothing happens in the image because I'm specifying what, but I haven't yet specified where. So I'll increase saturation. The amount at this point is just a guess. And then I'll move my mouse into the image. Notice how I have both an inner circle and an outer circle. The inner circle is going to be fully affected, and the outer circle is going to feather. So actually, just so that you can see how that works, let me instead say that I'm going to darken this image tremendously. And then I'm going to go ahead and click once without dragging. See how soft that edge is? That has a lot of feathering. Feathering here in the brush options is set to 100. I'm going to undo that with Control Z. And I'm going to move feathering down to zero. So just so you can see the difference. Now I have no outer circle. There's no feathering at all. And you'll see that I have a very harsh edge. So feathering will control that. So let's reset exposure. In this case, we're going to increase saturation. We do want a soft edge to our changes. And then I can control brush size with my left and right bracket keys or the scroll wheel on my mouse. There's also a size slider here in the options, but I find it inefficient to have to keep going back and forth. Now I'm simply going to paint, so I'm going to click and drag to add saturation to the lips. And as I get towards an area where my brush is too big, I'll simply reduce it, and I'll keep going. Now as I hover over this pin, Lightroom shows me where I've painted. I can also type O for overlay. Now in Lightroom 3, if I don't remember O, I can check this box, Show Selected Mask Overlay. That will leave the overlay on so I can continue painting. Now with it on, I can see that I accidentally went over her skin here, so I can erase where I've painted by accident. I'm going to come over and click on the Erase Brush, and then with the scroll wheel on my mouse, I'll increase the size, and I'll just paint away where I painted by accident. Now I'll switch back to Brush A, which was my original brush and I would continue to paint, but in this case I'm done. So let's uncheck this box so we don't see the overlay. And now that we've painted, now that we can see where, we can come back and refine the what, or how much we're going to saturate. So maybe I'll saturate some, but then I'm also going to darken a touch. So notice how you can do multiple adjustments in the same area. Okay, now I'm going to use the space bar to get my hand tool, and I'm going to pan up to her eyes. So we're going to darken her eyes and we're going to darken his eyes. But notice how his are darker to start with. So we're going to be painting at different strengths for their eyes. Now this is a new adjustment. We don't want to continue to saturate. 
So we need to make a new instruction. So I'm going to click on New here. Then we're going to reset the saturation slider here. And now we want to brighten. So let's go ahead and use Exposure to brighten. And I'm going to overdo it in this case. I'm going to say Exposure of 1. And I'm just guessing. What I'm going to do is lay down part of this exposure increase the first time I brush, and then more of it the second time I brush, and allow it to build up to a level that, that works for her eyes and then his eyes. I'm going to allow it to be applied slowly rather than all at once by reducing the flow on the brush. So let's set it down to about 20%. So each time I brush, I'm going to get 20% of this exposure increase. And then I'll come paint in her eye here. And once wasn't really enough there, so I can go ahead and do it a second time. And come down and hit the checkbox if I want to see where I've painted. So notice how it's not showing bright red because it doesn't have it at full strength. And then I'll come over to this eye, paint a couple times. Now if I'm not getting enough and I feel like I have to paint over it many, many times, I'll simply increase the flow so the next time I paint, it will be much stronger. Let's go ahead and look at the before and after on her eyes by clicking on this switch at the bottom of the adjustments panel. So that's before and that's after. It's always a good idea to zoom out and evaluate the work. So I could go to the navigator panel, but I'm going to do control or command minus. And I'll do the before and the after. And I think that's good. I don't feel like her eyes are too bright. Now I'm going to zoom back in. Control or Command Plus. Get the space bar to pan around. And I'll go to his eyes. So his eyes, I may start at 50% and see how that works. So smaller brush with the scroll wheel on my mouse. So notice how I'm painting in different areas of the image with the same instruction now. I didn't start a new instruction for his eyes. So I'll hit switch on and off. And I feel like I've gone too far on that one. So what I'm going to do is partially erase it. I'm not going to erase it full strength. I'm going to erase it at partial strength. So I'll click on Erase. Reduce the flow on the eraser brush so that I erase just half of what I did. And I'll go ahead and click and drag over those areas. Now if I hit the switch on and off, you'll see that I still have some brightening, but not as much as I did before. I'll go back to brush A, and I'll reduce the flow here. I've learned from my mistake there, and I'll paint. Switch on and off, and then I'll zoom out. Make sure they look reasonably even. Now that I've said where, I can still come back to the exposure slider and increase or decrease it, but I have to realize that it's going to affect all four of the eyes. So maybe I will reduce them a little bit. Now that we've done that work, notice that we have two pins on the image. We have one over her eye, and if I hover over it, I can see that that's where I painted all four of the eyes. So that's the instruction to increase exposure 0.88 for those four eyes at the different flow levels. If I hover over this pin, I can see that that's her lips. So this pin is the saturation adjustment. This pin was the brightening adjustment. Two sets of instructions. Now, as long as this pin is active and it's black, I can continue to work on this. I can paint other areas of the image that I want to brighten. I can adjust the amount of brightening, etc. I can also, because the pin is active, I can hit the delete key and the change will be deleted. If I want to continue to work on her lips, maybe I darken them a little too much. I need to click back on this pin to make it active. Then I can continue to, to do whatever work I want to do with that pin. If I put the adjustment brush away, and I come back tomorrow and I notice that I need to darken her lips a little bit more, I'll click on the adjustment brush. I'll click on the pin to make it active. And I'll do that work. So it's never too late to come back and continue to refine the adjustments that you've made. All of the changes in Lightroom are non-destructive. So they can be refined, they can be deleted at any time. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in on his teeth here. His teeth are in pretty good shape, but often with people's teeth, not only do they need to be brightened, they need to have some of the yellow taken out. So let's go ahead and do that with his teeth. Now this is going to be a new instruction, so I'm going to click on New. 
and I'm going to brighten and I'm going to desaturate some. I'm not sure how much. And let's go ahead and set the flow to 100 so that I'm laying down the full effect the first time I paint. I'm going to go ahead and click to brighten his teeth. And now that I've specified where, I can come back and desaturate them some, them some more, decide not to desaturate, brighten more, brighten less, etc. And then I'll zoom out to evaluate it. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put the adjustment brush away and go to a second image here. Now, for this image, what I want to do is convert most of the image to black and white. I want to leave the poster in color and the can in color. I'm going to use the adjustment brush and I'm going to paint with negative 100% saturation to take out all of the color where I paint. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush, set saturation to negative 100, reset everything else, and then I'll click and paint. Now as I get close to the edges of the poster, I'm going to have to make sure that I don't spill over the edges into the poster. And Lightroom could help me with that. To protect edges, I'm going to turn on this feature called Auto Mask. Now I'm going to paint with the mask turned on so that you can see the effect of having Auto Mask on. Now I'm going to paint along this edge and I'm going to let the outer circle spill over, but I'm going to keep the inner circle pretty much along the edge. See how it protects the edge there? It's also protecting edges that I don't want it to protect. But let's go ahead and go along the edges of the can here. And you can see it does a pretty good job. To unprotect the edges that it protected, I'll simply uncheck Auto Mask and paint over those fully. By the way, I would zoom in on this image to 100% and work at that level if I was going to print this out. But for the sake of the video, I'll keep it zoomed out. Now I'll turn the mask overlay off and you can see that I pretty much have what I intended to, to get. I would come on I would come over here, turn off auto mask, and get the rest of these gaps in here. So what are some other examples of where you could use the adjustment brush? Let's go back to this image that I converted to black and white in the black and white video. Let's hand color this. Let's add a little bit of color using the adjustment brush. The what is going to be color. So I'm going to reset all of these other sliders. And I'm going to use this color square. I'll click on it and I'll choose a color to paint. So we'll paint green for the grass. I'm going to want to paint it fairly low saturation, but I don't know what that answer is going to be. So I'll guess and I'll close this out. And then I'll go ahead and paint. And I would, of course, do this more carefully and get it perfect. But now that I've laid down some paint, I can come in and adjust the color and the saturation. So I'll click back on the color square, maybe choose a little bit more yellowish green, and reduce the saturation some so that it's very subtle, or not very subtle at all. And then I'll close this out. I could go ahead now and do a new adjustment and change the color to blue and paint in the sky. So because it's a new color, it has to be a separate adjustment. Now that I can see where I'm painting, I can come back in and change the color and continue on. As I get close to the edges of the building, I would turn on auto mask and that would uh help protect me from spilling over there. It's not going to be perfect. I would definitely want to zoom in and fix any any issues that arise using the eraser brush. Well, you can see how that would work. So let's do one more example. Let's use this image here. And she already has nice skin, but let's say we wanted to soften her skin even more. First, let's increase the exposure on this image. It's too dark. And then let's use the adjustment brush. And I need to reset color, so I'll double click on the word color. And I'm going to paint with negative clarity. That will reduce contrast on the edges, which will give the image, or where I paint, a glow. 
So I'm just going to very quickly come in here. I'm just going to avoid the eyes and the mouth and the hair. You can hit the switch here to look at the before and the after. And if I feel like I've given it too much, because that pin is active, I can come over to Clarity and adjust it up. Now what if it wasn't enough? What if I wanted to really take this over the edge in terms of how much glow I give the skin? In that case, I would simply do a second negative clarity adjustment right on top of the first. So I'll click on New. I still want to do negative clarity. And I would just paint again. And the effect would be cumulative. So you can see I have two pins here. By the way, if you want your pins to show all the time, you're going to change the drop down here to Always. If you want to hide them, you can change it to Never. Or you can type H to hide and reveal. Auto will show your pins while you're hovering over the image, but when you move your mouse away from the image, they'll be hidden. But H also toggles your pins on and off. So that's your lesson on the adjustment brush.